So to finish off this assignment, the last thing we can do, we've placed our creature, we've adjusted it, we've played with uh, masks that alter the landscape, the shadows and highlights on the landscape, and the shadows and highlights on our creature. So the last thing is to make use of some of those texture overlays. And so I can take my creature and its mask and move those together down underneath the atmosphere. And you can see what that does. And I can take my, my overlay mask and move that up above the atmosphere and see the big difference. And I can play with the atmosphere a little bit with its opacity. So this is the purple one. This is kind of the, the mist fill one. And I'm going to increase the mist fill a little bit. I'm going to actually duplicate it. Take the other one back down to where it was before. And then I want to set this. Let's try soft light. So just like you can do overlay, you can do other things like soft light. Hmm. Or maybe normal, but just a little less. So I like that glow. Okay, now I'm going to erase away from it where my creature is. Because I know my creature looks pretty good, even without the atmosphere. But now I just want to use the atmosphere as another tool. So I'm going to make a really large soft-edged brush. I'm going to take it at a lower opacity. This is an eraser. And I'm just going to pass over my creature. Because it's more in the foreground, there's going to be less atmosphere affecting it between the viewer's eye. I can do the same thing with the purple. I'm just revealing the creature a little bit. All right, let's see if that made any difference. It changed it, but I don't know if it absolutely helped. Wait, how do you... From the there, that, so that's where I was. Actually, nope, that's where I was. And then I moved it behind some of the texture fills, right? So if I turn them off, you know, these are all just different layers. You can see how they impact the image. So my very top layer is my crystal. Behind that is my mask on my creature that gives it specific lights and darks. Underneath that is this purple texture overlay, which is just misty purple that gives everything a slight purplish tint. Underneath that is a, a grayscale texture overlay. Very subtle at only 10%. Below that is another copy of that, just erased in a different way at 10%. And then you have my creature, and then you have the landscape um, overlay layer, which gives the shadow underneath. Then you have the rocks, and then all the different landscape elements. Could you go over the fog one again? So if I wanted to add, this was at the end of assignment one, kind of as a, a special thing. So let me save it, and then I'll show you how to do a texture overlay. I'm a little worried for time, but it's worth it, and it'll be good to get it in the video. So if I go to 
let's see, a new tab, and just type in Google. I'll try fog this time. Fog texture overlay. You want them to be fairly large. I'd say at least a thousand pixels, so I'm going to say size large. But these you, we just use, so this is a nice one. And there's ones for rain. There's ones for like little particles in the air, right? So I save that somewhere, save it into my digital art file. There it is. Then I can bring that in as a composite layer on top of everything, just like it was a new landscape element. Because it's all organic and soft, I can stretch it any way I like. To fill the space. And then I'm going to rasterize it so I can delete away from it. And then I'm going to set it at different blending modes. So if I use overlay, that's a familiar one, right? That will have an effect, but that's actually not my favorite one. I think I'm going to use soft light or pin light. And you see it, it gives some atmosphere. But what we're doing here is we're then cutting our creature into that atmosphere. By using this eraser and altering it. So you can decide how much of the texture overlay you want. You definitely don't want your background to go to black. That's why I'm erasing a little bit from the top edge here. But you can play with these mists and these different kind of glazes overall. They can be really Let's helpful. You, you placed it and then you cut out a shape of your creature or you just set it to overlay mode? So I placed it and then I I didn't cut out my creature. I'm just erasing from it. I'm kind of treating it like it's air and I'm using my soft edged eraser at a low opacity to kind of wrap it around my creature. So this is what it looks like at normal mode. This is what it would look like with overlay. But what I actually like is for usually pin light or soft light for my texture overlays. And sometimes I like them on normal, but just at low opacities. Mine has like a black background, so it's giving me issues. Yeah, it's all things you can play with. And then you can play with the levels of them. But it's a way of compositing with kind of transparent elements over the whole thing to give you atmosphere. And I think that helps, actually. OK. So I think I'm done. I've got my creature in its landscape. I've made it as believable as I can. There's one tiny thing that bugs me. I'm going to fix it. This is me being really picky. And then I'm going to post it right at noon. And that's that bright white pixel right there. And instead of trying to chase it down, I'm just going to add it to my crystal layer. And I'm going to clone stamp from the current layer. And I'm just going to knock it down. All right. So now I hit Command S because I'm on a a Mac that's saving my latest PC, my latest PSD file, that I'm going to say export as a JPEG. I'm going to keep its quality somewhere between 70 and 100%. It's going to be fine. And then that JPEG is what I'm going to post to Canvas Assignment 3, the Creaturescape. I do that just by following the directions. Clicking reply below. And we just have to do it to Canvas first by the deadline. And any improvements we make in our portfolio.
video, we'll post them to Indra. But as we're still working on them, let's just post them to Canvas, since we're having so much trouble organizing them in Indra. So I can find it in downloads. It's the latest JPEG right there. I use the little blog interface to upload an image. You guys are getting good at this. I appreciate it. We put it in, and then we just shrink it down to fit. And then you can write your name and anything else you want to say about it. It's sometimes helpful to know that you're still working on something. And then I post it. And then we can critique it. Remember, you have to post it in order for the class to be able to see it. Okay. Make sure you